Welcome to the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indians Art of Storytelling. I am Katie Gerke with the Museum Learning and Programs Department. I would like to gratefully acknowledge the Native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as diverse and vibrant Native communities who make their home here today. Many Native communities tell stories in winter that educate as well as entertain. Each February, the museum celebrates storytelling by inviting Native storytellers to share their stories. Now, I would like to introduce to you from the Cherokee Nation, Robert Lewis. Osio, my name is Robert Lewis. I work for the Cherokee Nation as a school community specialist. I'm a Cherokee National Treasurer for the Cherokee Nation. I'm here to tell you some stories today. So we're gonna start right off with one. Now, when I was growing up, I heard stories from my dad and from my uncles. My dad's Navajo and Apache. My uncles are Cherokee. My mom's Cherokee. But every once in a while, they'd gather, have family gatherings, and from time to time, I would hear a story. Now, this one concerns our elders. It's important to have our elders because that's your wisdom. Uh, knowledge they have, you won't find anywhere else. But at one time, there was this young man out there hunting. And as he's out there walking through the woods, he's out there trying to feed his family. He'd been out there for three or four days, and he couldn't find anything. But he kept hearing something moving behind him, and he couldn't figure out what it was. Finally, he looked behind him and challenged whoever was out there, asking, who's out there? And this panther came diving out and knocked him down. Panther looked at him and says, I want to know something. Why is everybody afraid of you? Wolf's afraid of you. Bear's afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you. I want to know why they're so, so frightened. And so the young man lying on the ground with the panther looking at him says, We hunt with bows and arrows. And he's sitting there and he's shaking. So the panther looks at him and says, These are sticks. How can you hunt with sticks? They're not powerful like my jaws or my teeth or my claws. I've been following you for three days. You say you're hunting. You're a bad excuse for a hunter. You've passed deer. You've passed turkeys. There's a rabbit hiding over there in the bushes. I should just get rid of you right now. So the panther raises back his paw. The young hunter begins to think really fast and says, Wait, there's something I want to try to deal with you to save my life. So the panther says, What's that? In the snow, in the wintertime, I will find sometimes your people lying out there frozen. Panther thanks and says, yes, my people sometimes starve in the wintertime. What do you want to deal with? The panther says, I'll trade my life. If you let me live, I will hunt for your people. In the wintertime, I will leave some food out for them to go and be able to survive. Panther looks at him and says, that sounds like a good trade-off, but in order to do that, you better be able to hunt, so I better teach you. So the panther takes the young man and goes out into the woods. He says, you must hunt like a panther. You must be quiet and stealthy. All these animals out here can hear you, and you also must be still. So he begins to teach the young man how to hunt. As they go through the woods and go deeper and deeper to the forest, the young man realizes hunting like a panther is hard. It's tough. It's hard on his knees, hard on his elbows. He has to deal with bugs biting and crawling on him. But he's, after a few months, he learns how to hunt like a panther. So at the end of a few months, the panther says, I've taught you everything I know. You can hunt well. Remember your promise. Feed my people. And so the panther hunter walks off and goes back to his village. When he makes it back to the village, his mother is excited to see him. Says, I'm so happy you've come back, son. I was so afraid. You've been gone for so long. We thought we'd lost you. The young man says, you haven't lost me, mother. I can hunt like a panther now. Look at what I brought you. It shows this huge deer. The deer is sitting there, and as they're looking at it, all the people in the village realize they now have a really good hunter in their town. Young woman is sitting there watching the young man walk through the town and village, and he's bringing home big deer, big bear, and big turkey. And so the young women decide, we should try to choose him as our husband. And so they begin to go to the mother. All these people are jockeying for a position to go and find a time to talk to this young panther hunter. But the chief walks up and says, I see you hunting all the time. You bring home the big, biggest bear, largest deer. You should be able to teach our young men how to hunt like you. And so the young man says, I'll be happy to. I was taught by a panther. I'll be happy to teach all the men how to hunt like panthers. And so they go out into the woods. And as he's out in the woods with all these men teaching them how to hunt, the other men realize how hard it is, how tough it is. It's hard on their knees, hard on their elbows. They don't like bugs crawling over them. So one by one, they all go back to that town. Eventually, the panther hunter is left alone in the forest. And so when he comes back, he talks to the chief. And he says, I was out there all day. In the past few days, I've been out there trying to teach them. They don't want to learn. They say it's too hard. It's too tough. Chief says, yes, I know. They've come back. 
I tell you what, you do so well as hunting, would you mind helping to feed some of the elders? And so the young panther hunter says, yes, I'll feed some of the elders. The chief says, thank you, and he walks off. So the young panther hunter begins to hunt, and he realizes something. As he's out there hunting to take care of the elders, more and more of the young men stop going out to hunt because they realize, hey, the panther hunter will hunt for us. He'll take care of this for us. And so years pass by. The young man who can hunt like a panther has no chance to go out and hunt and find his own wife. And as he's out there hunting for everybody else, the men become lazy in that town and village. His mother passes on. His father passes on. For too long, it's just him out there hunting out in the woods, bringing home deer, bear, and turkey. But at the same time, as he's out there hunting, the other young men in the town and village spend their time sitting at home. As the young panther hunter gets older and older, his hair turns white. He's out there in the woods one day and sees a whole village approaching. And as he's watching them approach, the young man from the village see him out there. And they say, look, look at that elder out there. He's got two big bear with him. Where did he get the bear? The young women in that new town approaching say, he's a good hunter. Look at him. Maybe somebody else hunted for him. He can't have done this. And so they go walking up and talk to him. As they talk to him, they realize that that old man is able to hunt like a panther. And so the chief of that new town comes up and says, we want to settle out here. We want to raise our families out here. There's enough place and hunting grounds for everybody to stay here and survive. The old panther hunter takes him to his town so they can meet his old chief. And the old chief walks forward and says, you cannot take more than you need. And the young leader says, we don't hunt that way. We only take what we need. And so the old man says, well, we have enough room here for both our tribes to stay here. You're welcome to go and hunt. And as they walk back to the new village that's setting up there with a new young leader, the new young leader talks to that old panther hunter and says, Would you be so kind as to teach my young men how to hunt like a panther? And so the old panther hunter says, I'll try. My town didn't want to do this, but I'll try it and see if it works with yours. They go out into town and they leave. And when they leave into the forest, the old panther hunter tells them, You have to get down into the dirt. You must crawl. You must have bugs crawling over the top of you. You must suffer it as you're out there hunting. You must be quiet and still. And so they try for a few days. And again, he starts to hear the same complaints. This is hard on my knees. This is tough. I don't like the bugs crawling on me. And he expects them to leave. But the men from that town don't. They decide, we'll tough this out. If this old man can do this, we can do this too. And so they stay out there in the woods with him. They learn. And after a few months, all those young men from that new town can hunt like panthers. They try to honor the old panther hunter. He says, I don't need any honors. I'm glad somebody listened to me. And so he goes back into the woods. A few days pass, and then the old panther hunter passes away. Now, when he passes away, that old town now has nobody hunting for them. Their men have forgotten how to hunt. They go out there trying to hunt, and they can't catch anything. The old town's starting to starve. And so the old chief takes his warriors and goes to that new chief and says, My town is starving. Children are hungry. The women are mad at us. We need to bring some food home. Can you teach us how to hunt again? Our old panther hunter, he's passed away. He's gone. And so the new chief says, I'll be happy to help you. Gathers all his warriors and says, the old panther hunter's town is here. They want to learn how to hunt like a panther again. And so they get out into the woods. But as they're getting out of the woods and they're getting ready to settle and teach those old people how to hunt again, the young leader walks up to the old chief and says, I want to know something. The old panther hunter was with you for years and you never learned from him. How come? This so shame that old chief and those old warriors they would remember seeing that old panther hunter go out there every day to hunt for them. That they didn't say a word, they just turned and walked back into the woods. And that whole town disappeared and died away. And a new one flourished, all because they listened to that old elder who taught them all how to hunt like a panther. And so this is for all of you. You have elders in your towns, you have elders in your communities, elders in your family. That grandma that comes by, the grandpa that comes by, the great uncle. Sometimes when you have holidays, they tend to be sitting off in the corner by themselves. I encourage you to go and talk to them because there's wisdom there. They can tell you things that, about your family you would not know. You don't know how many times I've heard from people say, I wish I'd talked to my grandma. I wish I'd talked to my grandpa. But they're no longer here with us. So you must take that time. Go towards them. Ask your grandma and grandpa. This pandemic we have around us, you survived it. We're trying to survive it right now. Have you ever suffered anything like this? And they might tell you something about that. 
You might learn something from your grandpa. My grandpa could hunt and fish out there in the woods. Love to learn how to hunt and fish. My grandma makes the best apple pie in the world. Nobody cooks like my grandma, chicken and dumplings. But when they pass on, all that goes with them. So you must take the time now to gather this knowledge from them because it won't be around with you forever. Next story I have for you is about love. Okay. Now, usually when I go out and do storytelling with area schools and communities, I have the children up there with me and they get to be the bear, the wolf, and the panther. But sometimes I pair them up and says they have to fall in love with each other. And it's usually funny for all the other children sitting in the audience. They'll laugh at the young boy or girl sitting up in front of there with me. But here's your love story for today. At one time, there was a man who was out there and he was crying in the woods. He was moaning and crying so loud. He was crying to the Creator. He was crying to the trees. He was crying so loud he finally heard a voice down by his feet say, Why are you crying so loud? You wake me up. What are you doing? And the young man looks down and sees a mole looking at him. And the mole says, you're up here boning away. I can't hardly understand what you're saying, and you keep waking me up. The young man sits down and says, I'm in love, the most beautiful girl in the town and village, and I can't even talk to her. When I see her, my mind goes blank. Sometimes she sees me staring at her, and I realize I'm staring at her, and I can't look away. And She just walks away. I think I make her scared. And then sometimes when she's not looking at me and I see her walking by and start walking towards her, I think, I'm, I'm going to talk to her today. I'm going to talk to her. And then I realize I can't, and I bump into a tree. And so the mole says, I've heard about this sickness that sometimes young men have when they fall in love with somebody. I tell you what, I have a potion. The young man says, I don't want any potions. I've tried potions before. Some of the medicine men in the town and nearby villages have given me potions. Rubbed it in my hair, put it on side of me. Sometimes it smells. Sometimes bees chase me. And it doesn't work. The mole looks at him and says, I tell you what. If you'll promise that you won't come by my house and cry anymore about this young girl you're in love with, I will give you the best love potion in the world. Just promise me you won't do that. So the young man says, okay, I'll keep my promise. I won't, I won't do that. And as they go off and, and start to go out into the woods, the mole's gathering things, and the young man's watching him. And the mole says, don't watch me too closely. I don't want anybody to have my secret. I don't want any of those medicine men to have my secret either. So look away every once in a while. Eventually, the mole gets all his materials, goes back to his house, and says, I'll tell you what, we have to do this at night when it's really dark. So come back here when the moon's up high in the sky and everybody in town and village is asleep. You come back here and pick me up. I've got to work on the potion. So that night, that young man's all excited. He comes back to that mole's house. And as the mole's sitting there working on his potions, he's got them all sitting in little gourds. He says, okay, pick me up. Take me to your town. And they walk into the town and village. Everybody's asleep. And as they get closer and closer, the mole says, you have to take me near her house. Okay. And when they get beside that woman's house, the mole says, who lives in there? The young man says, she lives with her mother. Okay. And, and I've tried to talk to both of them, but I can't even talk to the mother either. And the mole says, you have it bad, don't you? Okay, here, we're going to do this. Take this potion and drink it. So the young man drinks it. And as he drinks it, he feels a little dizzy and a little woozy. And he sits there and looks at the mole and says, everything's growing around me. Trees are getting larger. The rocks getting you're getting large too. Look, you're the size of a bear now. And the mole says, No, you're shrinking. It's okay. And when the mole sister and sees that the young man's gotten smaller and smaller, the mole says, Okay, we'll stop right here. Quit drinking. Let me have another potion. And as the potion is sitting there and give, given to the mole, the mole sister, and he says, I'm gonna drink this one. And drinks it. Go, 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 go. And he says, Let's go into the to the house. And as they sneak into the house, the mole says, I brought this pouch. I want you to hold it up for me for me. Just hold it open. That's your job. You stay right here. Hold it open. And the mole sits there and finishes his drink and looks at the young man and says, Now, don't be afraid. Don't yell. Some strange things are going to happen. Just be quiet. And as the mole sits there talking to him, the young man looks at the mole and says, You're starting to fade. You look like smoke. And the mole turns into smoke and goes up into the air. And the young man watches. And as the young woman sitting there sleeping, the smoke, she breathes it into her and it disappears inside. The young man sitting there watching. And after a little while, the young woman rolls over, opens her mouth, and when she breathes out, that smoke comes back out, floats back down, and lands in front of that young man. The young man's holding the pouch, and he watches as the mole shows back up. And when the mole shows back up, he's holding the beating heart from that girl. He sits there, and he puts it in the pouch. The young man says, what did you do? And the mole says, I brought you her heart. Okay, we're going to put this on a necklace. You're going to carry it around with you. And the young man says, she's gone. He says, no, no, she's still asleep. It's my potion. It's my magic. Okay. Her heart will be right next to yours. Tomorrow morning, she's going to try to find you. Come on, let's go. 
And so they go out of the house, and when they get back outside the house, the mole hands another potion and says, here, drink this one. So the young man drinks it, and he gets taller again. Picks up the mole, takes him back out into the woods, puts him back beside his house. The mole says there, fix, fix, finishes fixing up the necklace, says, here, put this around. Do you feel it? And inside that pouch, the young man can heal just, and it's that young woman's heart. So okay, hold her right beside yours. You walk out the next day, she's going to try to find you. My job's done. You have the love of your life with you. Now please stop crying by my house. And so the mole goes home to go to bed. The young man wakes up the next morning kind of excited. He walks around the town and village, but he doesn't see the young woman and their mother. Finally, the mother comes walking out, and she says to her, and says, Daughter, what's wrong? And that beautiful girl comes walking out, long, beautiful hair, chiseled face, and she says, Mother, I feel strange. I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm missing a part of myself. And the mother says, Well, that's bad. Let's go see the medicine man. As they start to walk towards the medicine man, the young man comes walking out towards her. And when that beautiful woman sees him, her eyes flash open. She says, Mother, I know who I need. I need him. And she runs straight towards him. The mother is in shock says, Him? He, he can hardly talk to you. What do you want with him? What do you want with him? And so she grabs his arm and says, This is the man I'm going to marry. That young man, his heart's beating so fast. He says, I finally, I found a love potion that works. And so everybody in the village watches as everybody gathers and they sit there and they see this young woman that nobody could get to marry them has chosen the shyest person in the town and village to marry. And so while they're sitting there, the medicine people are also watching this and thinking, where did he get this power? He bumps into trees and trips over rocks when he sees her. And now look, she won't let go of him. She clings right next to him, follows him everywhere. Something's wrong here. So when they get married, the medicine people come forward. They bring gifts. And while they're sitting there talking, they happen to ask the young man, says, how did you make this happen? We gave you our medicine. He says, I know, I put it in my hair, the bees chased me, I put it on my skin, I smelled. But I finally found a love potion that works. And he said, well, where did you get it? He said, from the mole, it's a love potion, it's inside this pouch. I'll keep her with me forever. And so the medicine people look at each other and says, it's the mole. The mole has a love potion. Let's go find this love potion. So they go out into the woods. And all the other towns hear about this famous love potion. And so they know that love's important. So they said, if we can get this love potion from this mole, Everybody will come to our town. And so they start to go find the mole. The mole hears about this and says, Nope, I'm not giving it to anybody. Dies and crawls underneath the ground. And this day he stays under that ground because he knows everybody wants his love potion. So from time to time, he does try to peek himself out to see if anybody's still looking for him. Which is why every once in a while you're out there mowing your lawn or you go cutting your grass and you see moles out there. That mole potion probably, that mole probably got that potion trying to find out if somebody wants his love potion because everybody needs love.